Guys, I was planning on talking about the FC controllers this week, but I had a request to talk about using monitors versus a guitar amp, as well as how to use multiple outputs. So I figured that I'd use this episode to talk about the many ways to connect the FX3 to the outside world. The FX3 has more ports than any other modeler, hands down. Look at the back, it has 28 different ports and that does not include the headphone port on the front. Now this offers many different options for connectivity. Let's look at how you can hook the FX3 to the outside world, starting from the simplest setup and moving up from there. Number one, headphones. The FX3 has a quarter inch headphone jack on the front panel. You control the output level with the Out1 knob. The headphones output is hardwired to Out1, so if you're also using Output1 for speakers or studio connection, etc. at the same time, you can copy Out1 to Out2 in the Setup I.O. section and then make your connections using Output2. That way you can control the headphones with Out1 knob and control the other connections with the Out2 knob. The headphones option is very convenient for players who don't have a private soundproof space for playing. You can play whenever you want, as loud as you want, for as long as you want, without bothering anyone. Two, connect directly to a guitar amp. Now this method is not recommended, but there are guys that do it anyway. So here you go. Use the output one quarter inch jacks. If using one amp, use the left quarter inch output jack. If using two amps, use both the left and right quarter inch output jacks. Adjust your amps gain to be clean, and the EQ should be flat. Adjust the amp volume, then turn up the Out1 knob to get the desired volume level. If you get hum with this setup, you can order some humbuster cables from Fractal Audio. Now, depending on how much color your amp and speakers add to the overall sound, you may have to disable power amp modeling and cabinet modeling. On the speaker page of the amp block, set speaker drive to zero. You may also want to zero out speaker compression. 3. Connect to a PA system. Use the Output 1 XLR jacks. If using a mono mixer, use the Output 1 left XLR jack. If connecting to a stereo system, use both the left and right XLR out jacks. The FX3 sends a line level so you don't need to turn up the gain on the board. Make sure to clue the sound crew in on this one or they're going to be in for a very loud <laughs> surprise. Guaranteed. Number 4. Connect to a recording console. This process is the same as if you were connecting to a PA system. Use the Output 1 XLR jacks. If using one channel, use the Output 1 left XLR jack. If using two channels, use both the left and right XLR out jacks. Let the engineer know that you will be giving them a line level signal. 5. Connect to a computer audio interface. There are a few options here. Uh, you can use the quarter inch outs, the XLR outs, AES out, SPDIF, SPDIF out, and USB. The quarter inch and XLR are analog, AES, SPDIF, and USB are digital. I've got my FX3 connected to my UAD Apollo via the SPDIF out. It shows up as input 17 and 18 in my DAW, you know, digital audio workstation. Using SPDIF to connect means just one RCA cable between the FX3 and my Apollo. This keeps all my other XLR and quarter inch jacks on the Apollo available for other mics or instruments. Now you can use USB for audio too, as mentioned in last week's video. Using OUT1 sends audio to USB 1 and 2 in on your computer. Using OUT2 sends audio to USB 3 and 4 in on your computer. And you can also set up the FX3 to actually be the audio interface in your home studio. Six, connect to a pair of powered FRFR speakers for live use. Now, FRFR means full range, flat response. This appears to be the most popular setup. Instead of connecting to your guitar amps or the PA, you'd connect the FX3 to each FRFR speaker using XLR cable. You'd aim the cabs at the audience, just like if you were using guitar amps. Seven, using FRFR monitors plus front of house. In this situation, you'd have a pair of powered wedges aiming up at you, just like vocal monitors. The wedges would get their signal from the output one XLR jacks. You'd copy out one to out two in the setup IO section. Then you'd send output to the front of house via the output two XLR jacks. With this setup, you can adjust each output independently. 
set out two to three o'clock for the house, then adjust out one for your own wedges. Eight, using a guitar amp and cab plus front of house. In this setup, we use a preset that includes a cab lock to front of house using out one, but we also create a second path that doesn't include the cab lock. We send that to out two, which goes to your guitar amp. Again, for this setup, you want to set your guitar amp to be as clean and flat as possible. The cab block is moved to the end of the chain, right before out one. If you're sending a mono signal to the PA, this will work fine, because the effects will collapse down to mono. However, if you're sending a stereo signal to the PA, make sure that the cab block is set up for stereo use. If you don't, the effects will be in mono. Out two is a signal that you would send to your guitar amp you can use the quarter inch left out from out two to make this connection. You can adjust each output independently with this output. Set out one to three o'clock for the house, then adjust out two for your guitar amp. Nine, use the four cable method. This is a more detailed version of connecting to your amp. Your amp must have an FX loop in order for this to work. Now this is directly from the manual. The four cable method, 4CM setup places the AxeFX3 in two places at once with two separate processing chains. The first goes in front of your amp where a chain of pre-effects like wah and drive replace traditional stomp boxes. The second placement is in the effects loop of the same amp where a chain of post-effects like delay and reverb would appear. 4CM requires special presets with no amp or cab locks. A template is included, that would be preset number 382. Signal hits the AxeFX3 first, where it is processed by pre-effects. Output 3 feeds the front of the amplifier. A chain of post-effects is run in the amp's effects loop using input 4 and output 4. Note that the pre and post chains are not connected to each other at all on the grid. In fact, either chain can be as simple or as complex as desired. Connect your guitar to input 1, instrument. Connect output 3 left to the input of your amp. Set the front panel out 3 knob fully clockwise for unity gain operation. A hum buster cable is recommended to reduce hum from ground loops. Connect your amp's FX send to input 4 left on the Axe FX3. Input levels can be adjusted on the input page of the I.O. menu under setup. Set input 4 mode to left only on the audio page of the I.O. menu under setup. Connect output 4 left to the FX return of your amp. Set the front panel out 4 knob as desired for appropriate volume. To extend this configuration for optional stereo, connect output 4 right to the FX return of a second amp, bypassing that unit's preamp altogether. Number 10, using the FX3 for post effects only. This would allow you to use your pedals and your amp and would let you use the delays, reverbs, etc. in the FX3. This is one of the setups for guys who just can't give up their old rigs. Again, from the manual. This setup uses only three of the four cables used in the four cable method for operation in an amp's effects loop, providing post, but no pre effects. Output three and four are designed for unity gain applications, which may or not be important in this case, depending on your amp. Here we'll use output three and pair it with input three for simplicity's sake. You'll need to create custom presets without amp or cab blocks, containing only the effects that sound good to you after preamp distortion. That would be like chorus, EQ, delay, reverb, certain types of pitch shift, etc. Connect your guitar to your amp's instrument input as usual. Connect the FX send of your amp to input 3 left. Input levels can be adjusted in setup, IO, input. Now in setup, IO, audio, Set input 3 mode to left only. Connect output 3 left to the FX return of your amp. Set the front panel out 3 knob as desired for appropriate volume levels. If unity gain is required, set the knob fully clockwise. To extend this configuration for optional stereo, you'd typically connect output 3 right to the FX return of a second amp, bypassing that unit's preamp altogether. Other types of stereo setup are of course possible, including using two totally different amps, each connected on left and right sides of one I.O. pair, or I.O. 3 for one amp and I.O. 4 for another. 11. 
using the FX3 for pre-effects only. Now this would be like having the world's largest pedal board connected to your amp. This setup uses only two of the four cables used in the four cable method. Outputs three and four are designed for Unity gain applications, which is important in this setup. Here we'll use output three and pair it with input three for simplicity's sake. You'll need to create custom presets without amp or cab locks, and those presets should be created with an understanding of how effects sound in front of your amp's preamp and the distortion it generates. Connect your guitar to input one instrument on the Axe FX3. Adjust input levels if required. Connect output three left to the input of your amp. As usual, a humbuster cable is recommended. Set the front panel out three knob fully clockwise for Unity gain. To extend this configuration for optional stereo, connect output 3 to the input of a second amplifier. You might use the Axe FX3 to select between two amps by changing channels on the output 3 block. Channel A, balance center, that would be both amps. Channel B, balance left, that would be the left amp. Channel C, balance right, that would be the right amp. Channel D is not used in this setup. Twelve including outboard gear. With the typical direct setup using only input one and output one, the Axe FX3 has enough IO blocks left over for multiple send and return inserts of output gear. The example in the manual shows a third party device inserted using output three used as a send and input three used as a return. This setup can also be used with stereo inserts or expanded with multiple IO pairs for multiple outboard devices. Insert devices can even be added to other types of setups using these same techniques. Custom presets are required for this type of setup with output and input blocks added for the send and return points. Yeah, the Axe FX3 does not have FX loop blocks, so inputs and outputs are placed individually on the grid. In a send return pair, the output block is connected to the input block, allowing the input block to serve as a master bypass control for the send return loop. Connect your guitar to input one instrument. This example assumes output one is connected to FR, FR monitors. Connect output three left as a send to the input of your output device. Adjust output levels using the front out three knob with the following considerations. Out one and two have options for minus 10 dBV and four dBU in setup IO audio. Outputs three and four provide unity gain when the knob is fully clockwise. You can also adjust the level of an individual output block. Connect the output of your outboard device to input 3 left as a return. Adjust levels on your device or use the trim controls under Setup, I.O., Input. Optionally connect the right channel inputs and outputs for stereo insert devices. 13. Multiple I.O. Setups. The flexibility of the new input and output blocks allow some very cool and complex setups to be basically self-explanatory. These presets show ideas for rigs which in the past might have required intricate explanations, but now <laughs> they're just presets. Here's three examples. One, here inputs one and two are used independently with the magnetic and piezo outputs of a dual output guitar. The two signals eventually merge for some mastering effects before being passed to output one in full layered stereo. Two, this rig processes full guitar and bass rigs at the same time. Guitar uses input one and output one. Bass uses input two and output two. This setup would have required two separate Axe FX2 units to accomplish. And three, let's look at a more vertical example. Here, a mini FR FR guitar rig is combined with three sets of effects set up to be integrated with a mixer for live performance. Chain one is for the guitar. Chain two is used for a special vocal FX insert chain, complete with a drive block. Chain three is a massive stereo shimmer for a keyboard rig, controlled by its own volume pedal. Chain four contains a mix of effects, imagined to be used in different scenes on an aux bus. The idea in these layouts might inspire other setups, perhaps in combination with the rig setups that I mentioned earlier. For example, you might use extra inputs and outputs to insert outboard gear, or use different backline and front of house options. Guys, there are many, many different possibilities with the FX3. Okay guys, I'll definitely be talking about the FC controllers next week. So hit the subscribe and notification button so you'll know when this stuff comes out. All right. 
See you then.